Hey, 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 Superior Shave fans and other humans, how you doing today? 13 of April, 2024. Okie dokie. Those taxes are due in the United States in a couple of days. I hope you filed. What are we going to do today? We're going to get rid of all this crappy hair on my face with a straight razor. Still getting over the COVID, so the nose doesn't work that great. It's been two weeks now, and I still can't smell that well, but there's a new shaving soap to pimp. This is from Spain. This is how the package arrives to you. In a little wax paper thing. Uh, Sabater Honos Fabrica de Jabones. And it is the Jabón de Afeitar. Now I remember from high school Spanish, and I took a year of it at UF too. Afeitar means shave. That was the verb, to shave. So, soap of to shave is what we've got there. I'm sure. My Spaniard college roommate would be laughing at my wonderful accent if he saw this video. Uh, this is a 110 gram hard milled disc and it does have olive oil in it, but it's a, um, it, it is a uh, vegan soap with potassium stearate as the first ingredient and then potassium palm kernelate, potassium cocoate, sodium stearate, and then finally uh, olive oil and parfum. But whenever you have stearic as the first thing, you can be sure it's a very stable soap. Usually those cost a lot per gram to run because they have a high burn rate, but this one is hard milled. So it is a, it is a rock hard milled stearic acid base, which is, um, I guess that's vaguely like what um, tobacco does, right? Okay. We are going to use this Zarkaful shaving or facial soap to wash my face. And uh, Zarkaful super fans, watch out! Monday, I think Monday we will have more of the Prince Charming soap and aftershave. Or sorry, not Prince Charming, Men's Secret. She calls it Men's Secrets now. Anyway, it's the aftershave everybody wants. You want some? It's great. All that. Yeah. Mm. I should have taken off my shirt and my. Stupid plastic teeth. I'm almost done with the plastic teeth. You know, they really string you along with that shit. And um, first they told me it was going to be 28 trays. You wear each tray for a week. I'm like, okay. Hell, that's only six months. I'll be in and out of there. That was month, three months before the fire of last year. So I did what they said. And then when we got to the ending, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you need more. So then um, they scanned my mouth again and mailed it off to the teeth analysis team. And then they said, is it uh, 20, 20 more, 20, 28, uh, 20, 20 more trays after that. So then I had to wear 20 more of these annoying things. Up to 48 weeks of having this crap in my mouth. Oh. The problem is uh, your mouth gets like plaque on it or my mouth does like really, really fast and my teeth look like brown, disgusting, tobacco stained teeth and it doesn't matter how much I brush them. It's this effing tray trapping up all that shit inside there. I take it out and wash it with an ultrasonic jewelry cleaner and a polydent fast like three times a day and it still doesn't matter. My teeth are disgusting. But um, so I did the 20 trays and then they're really straight basically, but uh, the back molars, the first, the first two teeth to the back, the top and the bottom. When I bit down, they're not, they're not touching each other. They weren't doing anything. So uh, then they had, they had to correct that. I was at that point ready to say, I quit. Forty-eight trays is enough of this. Please give me back my life. They're like, no, you can't go through life having those four teeth not touching each other because then they're not cutting food or anything. So. We had to do 10 more. These are really intense trays and they're moving like crazy. This is number eight that's in here. So I've got two more to go. And then finally, I hope that's it. I feel like that will be it. Um, yeah, I, I want it to be it. <laughs> I think I've made that point to you. The razor that we're using is this beautiful Evide Sonant Extra Tears Assard with this incredibly gorgeous barber insertion scales. Uh, if you've been watching the site, you see that I have a lot of stock keeping units that are listed out of stock by Thiers Assard, and they are supposed to be coming. Well, they've been stuck in customs for 10 days, and it's all because, as it turns out, it's not because of mammoth tusk that's in there. It's not because of Pinctata maxima, which is a endangered species. 
they don't have the whole shell of Pinctata maxima, but what they do is they that's that's a commercially viable shell still in Indonesia, but they don't have shells long enough, they don't have oysters long enough to make a straight razor handle. So they they take the shells and they cut them into little blanks to make for pocket knives and whatever. And then those extra bits that are left over, they grind that up to a pulp and it has a particular luminescence to it that's really cool that only Pinctata Maxima has. Here we go. I'm going to lather my face with this thing. It reminds me of La Toja stick, the smell. Anyway, where are we with the stupid story? Uh, and then they take those ground up shells, they mail that to France, and France produces a resin handle that is lifelike in its Pinctata Maxima general appearance. And then they sprinkle the other shell on, they sprinkle the actual shells on the outside of the resin, and that's the man made byproduct with, you know, three grams of shells per handle, whatever. Yep, the, the what happened was, um, you have to go with an in-between when you're when you're when the package is coming in you're forced to use these shipping companies brokers and they don't give a shit about you they they live in an ivory tower they act like any mistake is your end they you can you can't call them you can only email them and they just they just ghost you you could sit there and beat your head over uh, over how long it's taking and they're just not gonna they're gonna ignore you and they're gonna answer only when they want to so i learned just don't even bother anyway um so my contact asked for forms of a Lacey Declaration and a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Declaration of all the dead animals in the parcel, and I did that. And then the person said that they mailed it to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, but he was lying because a couple of days after that, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service called me. I've been in business for 15 years. That's like talking to God. Never happened before. And the person who was assigned to my parcel said, hey, I've got this parcel of yours from Tears of Sard and... I haven't received any declaration. And I told him, well, you know, I'm forced to use DHL's broker. And uh, um, they said that they gave it to you. No, they didn't. So, um, I emailed the guy and said what the, what the wildlife man said. And then he emailed me another form and I filled that out. And then the DHL man said, okay, we've submitted everything. We don't need anything more from you. Well, that was last Tuesday. Here we are Saturday. Friday, I'm starting to get, yesterday, I'm starting to get extremely nervous that the box is going to get turned around to the European Union, which has happened to me once before. And when it goes back to the European Union, you pay a 20% penalty for a repatriation fee, which is, you know, you're only going to make the gross maybe 32% if you did really well and had wonderful stock. But 27% net profit gross is really, realistically a much more realistic number. Uh, sometimes it's a little lower, but 27 is about right. So you're taking 20% of 27, plus it's a $10,000 box. It's a lot of friggin' razors in there. So uh, yeah, I don't want that very badly. So I called back the number and... Wouldn't you believe it? The person that's assigned to my parcel talked to me. And they told me, we don't care about the Pinctata Maxima because he knew that it was like what I just described, man-made and all that byproduct. They don't care about the mammoth tusk razor because it's extinct. There's nothing for U.S. Fish and Wildlife to concern themselves with. But they always care about badger. So it really comes down that that 10,000 euros parcel is being held up because they want more information, which I've already given DHL, about the badger brushes. So at this point, like, how badly do people need the badger brushes? Look, I like badger brushes and this is a badger brush, but man, they really make that shit hard to import into the United States since 2021. Something changed in the summer of 2021 and you know, you could you could buy from a Chinese guy and they know how to magically get it through there and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife never stops those. But I don't want to sell crap from China. I want to sell things from Europe. And getting European produced badger brushes, whether the hair comes from China or the hair comes from, from European Union, with the French brushes, they still do have one badger farm that's in the European Union. Um, but it doesn't really matter. If it's Malays, Malays, that thing is getting attention and it's hardcore. Um, so, anyway, to make a long story longer, I did 
get good information from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife man. He told me what to write to the DHL contact. I'm going to write that as soon as this video is over. And I hope that means that on Monday that parcel gets released and I probably would get it by Tuesday. So finally we'll have all that Thiers Assard stuff. And I wanted to make another Thiers Assard order, but I can't really do that until I get the previous one. And you know, the, the risk of that 20% penalty over your head, having to come up with that money, you know, as I make the point to you, and thank you very much if you're supporting this business. It really means a ton to me, but this business is a tiny little peon, as is straight razors in general. Wow, this is, I've been sitting here yapping, we've got 11 minutes on the timer. Look at how stable this, this, uh, this ladder is. This razor, I have concaved the bevel, and it is a hell of a lot better than the razor that <laughs> Captain Stumpy recommended my customer in Maine to buy, which is, uh, that one breaks down the first 2% every time you use it, just a little tiny bit, but just enough, like someone like me, I could, I could feel the difference. This Thiers Assard is not as thin as that razor. That razor has better thinness. And really, the, the peak of thinness in the early 20th century, you can't touch it. I'll admit that. But steel-wise, I don't think their steel is better. I, I actually think Thiers Assard modern steel is better than most of the steel from back then. Uh, I do love Sheffield steel from the late Sheffield era. It's remarkably soft and flexible, but... Most soft razors can't come to a holding position that's as thin as like a razor like this, or particularly like Wacker is really good for that. But the Sheffield ones, they combine softness and holding a thin edge brilliantly. And I think they're unsurpassed in that way. The problem is they're like, they're running out and they're all wore down and everything. And it's hard to find one that doesn't have pitting or stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, of course I'm going to say it's fantastic. It's been like six days since I shaved. Everything's going to be fantastic at that point. But um, it's getting a little dry, so I'm going to wet the brush just a little bit here. <laughs> and as I'm talking to you, I'm very mindful that razor's in my left hand, and my Braille method has my palm touching at the basin, because I know with the razor in my left hand, if my palm is touching the basin at the back left position, doesn't matter how I move that razor around, I cannot bonk into anything, it's too short. You have to be ever mindful of your incredibly fragile cutting edge and the sink basin, the countertop, and the faucet tap. Don't ever collide the, the cutting edge with those things, especially at the tip of the razor, or you'll completely screw the razor over, and you'll have to grind off a whole bunch of great steel, and it'll never be the same. I'll be honest, I don't use a ton of hyper-stable stuff, and yeah, this is, this is remarkably stable shaving soap, and it's milled. Uh, I don't think the scent is anything special. It's just a, yeah, it reminds me a lot of Latoha. It's a clean, it's a scent that a European soap that's more about performance and less about wowing you with entertainment for your nose. Okay, just the sole patch, and then we're done with the first pass here. Okay. 
That razor is electric. That razor has no trouble. You know, on that Badger and Blade forum thread, they're going on and on and on and on. And uh, someone's making the point that maybe not everybody would notice the difference between a concave bevel and a regular one. Yes, I will have to agree with that. But if you struggled with your razor and you've struggled with shaving and you've never tried a concave bevel, you really owe it to yourself to do it because it certainly makes the razor a lot more flexible at the tip. That's the one thing that no one can deny. Whether you notice the difference in that, whether you even want that, you can... I, I don't know why you wouldn't want a more flexible razor, but some people might not. And some people not, might not notice the difference, and that's fine. But don't sit there on that forum and say that it's not the way that the manufacturers intended it to be, because that is how they want it to be. They feel that it's worth chasing for that concavity and that flexibility, however small. Whether that's important to you or not is up to you. Hone the razor however you want. But if you've struggled with shaving and you've quit and you've never tried a concave bevel, you need to try it. And I'll start buying the stupid gold dollars some more. They concave well. You've got to finish the tip with something flat, in my opinion, or strop it on a pasted strop all the time. But they work well for it, and I'll have some more, and they'll be cheap. Please buy them. The shoulderless 681, uh, it's very easy to concave. The steel hones quite easily, and it takes and holds a reasonably good edge. And the, the three that I've sold, the customers have been very happy with them. So, who knows? I may have to buy from the Ningbo Scissor and Razor Company. I've been buying them, you know, $13 and change net after tax uh, from Amazon. And uh, that way you could buy a little bit, but if I buy direct, they're probably going to want, you know, 600 razors at once or something like that. <laughs> Wow, that almost looks like a tallow soap. Look at that, huh? Not gonna lie, it's impressive for the stability, that's for damn sure. Okay, we're going backward, we're going sideways from the ear toward the chin here. Here we go. Here we go, kitty bird. In my opinion, what you trade with the high stability Styrix soaps is, I wouldn't go so far as to say they're drying, but um, the feeling of the moisture that they have in them, it's just not the same as cold, cold saponified soaps like this, uh, this other new one that I just got, Le Barbier, and also, of course, my favorite, the Zarkaful. Uh, cold process soaps, yeah, the, the way they have moisture. I, I don't think that the hot process like this can compete with any cold process at the upper echelon. But you have to decide what you hold in highest priority. Okay, we're going to go backwards around the mouth and then clean up and see how we did. The thing is with these excellent hot process, like tobacco, which is really good, very smelly, you might not like the smell, but one cannot deny its hot process skills. Uh, they just have so much cushion in the lather, like you don't have to be as accurate with the straight razor. And this one has olive oil and it does help make it more slippery. I don't feel like it can be as slippery as top cold process slopes. So if slippery is your number one thing, if you want slip and moist, and you don't care so much about stability, you want cold process. If you want 
something you can lather once, take your time in the shave, and have a lot of cushion and protection, you want a hot process. Especially something like uh, Paraso or something like that. Ha ha! Okay, just get a little bit over here and we're done. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> do, 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 do. I always clean the blade first. So, just rinsing it down with some hot water. And then this is isopropyl alcohol. Keep it away from the resin of your scales. It can hurt resin. Dry him off a little bit. And I'm going to set him out while I get cleaned up. And then I will put some ballastol oil on the blade. Just set it out there just for a second. Let's get cleaned up. I'm sorry I can't sell you a sample of this because it's hard milled. I've never had any luck trying to break off hard milled. It busts off into a bunch of little bits. But, you know, for the 20 bucks or whatever it costs, you're going to get a whole lot of soap. I don't even think it's $20. I think it's cheaper than that, isn't it? Anyway. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper, as a matter of fact. Buy some soap! Come on! These were really great brushes, and I love this little company, but um, it's a small German company that prefers to sell you a Badger brush. A lot more money in those than a Synth brush. And um, I just can't brave those U.S. Fish and Wildlife Rapids anymore, guys. It's too scary. Maybe uh, there's a third-party website that you have to be a reseller to use, and you could buy a small quantity of French brushes. So, for example, you couldn't do it direct, but with the magic of the third party, and unfortunately those little tiny, tiny Germans are not on that third party site, so I can't buy from them. But I could buy Plisson high-end French brushes, which sometimes have badger that's from European Union, not from, not from China. Um, they're odd brushes. They have the weirdest canopy, and they're they prefer a more loft, you know, it's it's a very French product because they do it the way they do it and you either like it or you don't. But I love that about the French. Anyway, uh, I'm not opposed to trying a under the radar small purchase from them for less than a thousand dollars because if it gets stopped by U.S. Fish and Wildlife, you know, nah, you only had 800 bucks at play, who cares, right? So that may be the only path toward offering you a European shaving brush because uh, um, Dobo has moved away from any badger. They're not going to make it anymore. And Tears of Sard, they do have badger, and they have badger from European Union. But I can't be having 120 straight razors held up by five shaving brushes in a box. And there isn't enough action on those brushes to put them in a box only of Tears of Sard shaving brushes. They're just too small of an item. Uh, okay, that was spectacular, the, uh, the putting on of the of the aftershave. Sorry, the putting on of the Allum Stone. There's like no tingle at all. That razor is incredible. You owe it to yourself to get one of those razors and have me hone it. It will drop your jaw. Okay, here we go. Uh, fine green vetiver. And I really believe in Tears of Sard. Uh, you, you, if, other than horn, I'm, anything that's fish and wildlife, you can't return. But as long as it's not fish and wildlife related, you can buy anything here and return it for 30 days and get all your money back. So, try one. The stories of them are greatly exaggerated. It's a wonderful French product. It's so good, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll give you a scoop here. Next month, my wife and I are going to the Thiers Assard factory to film some new footage for YouTube in the Thiers Assard factory. Isn't that exciting? So, have you ever wanted to say something to the French? Write it in the comments below and, um, Maybe I'll ask them about it. We're going to have to sit there and use Google Translate the whole time because nobody speaks any English there and I don't speak any damn French and I don't have the money for a translator. But, hey, uh, love me some French, love me some Tears of Sard, and I uh, can't wait to go to Lyon, France, which I've never been to. And, uh, you know, it's not Paris and it's a real French city and they're known for their food, so that should be pretty cool. Hey, wow. Woohoo! Woohoo!
Ooh, fantastic. Really good day. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Watch the Masters and have your triggers ready for Monday because I'm not going to make another shaving video between now and then and definitely Zarkofa will arrive. So the, I don't remember how many, three dozen jars of the, of the unstable bomb. Get ready. Get ready to buy it. It doesn't last long ever. Bye-bye.